Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about some of the requirements now for our ANOVA testing. So first things first, we need a we need some numerical data and categorical. So the numerical data is what we're actually interested in. We're actually interested in some true mean, weight, height, distance, something. And we're going to compare multiple groups to one another. We can do as few as two, but most of the time when we use ANOVA, uh, we're doing like three or four or more groups. And that's our categorical variable. So we need some numerical um, data that we're actually interested in and we're going to compare multiple groups and use the categorical variable to group the data together. Okay, so now that we know kind of like what type of data that we're looking at, uh, we need to start going down some of the kind of basic requirements that we always did with our other um, hypothesis testing as well. So one thing that we always looked at was normality and previously we were able to either say that the original distribution is normally distributed or we can invoke the central limit theorem by having a sufficiently large sample size. So that's really handy. Problem is, is with ANOVA testing, we actually don't get the, um, the use or the handiness of that central limit theorem. We don't get to use it. Because of that, all of our data, so all groups must be normally distributed, normally distributed, or approximately so. Okay, so we're going to have to go and check to see are, are our data normally distributed. So we could go look at the different categories and make histograms of them and to see if they are roughly bell-shaped. Um, and that, that's one way that we can do it. The problem is, is like, well, what if we have like 20 or 30 categories that we're trying to compare to one to another? That's a whole bunch of graphs that you actually got to go and track down and, and see if they're normally distributed. There's a much easier way. One other way that we can do this is by looking at what are called our QQ plots. So these are a residual plot. And the residuals are just the errors. And we basically are plotting the predicted, predicted error versus the actual. OK, so if the predicted is the actual, it's going, the points are going to lie on some line, on, on this um, one-to-one -one line. And what we can do is we can plot where the actuals are with respect to the, the predicted. And hopefully we get something that is kind of tight to the line like this. If the, if the dots or if our residuals are actually pretty close to our predicted, the actual and predicted, then we can say that, hey, our data is close enough to being normally distributed that we can go ahead and do our ANOVA testing. Now, if we get some major problems, in this so like for example let's say that instead our data points did something like this we had some like big deviations off of the plots and big deviations down and then we curve back up now if we have these like major deviations from what the predicted actually is then we should probably go back through and actually see um, like maybe we've got some issues with normality but basically and, and our commander can do this for us. It's just a, a couple of easy clicks and, and we can uh, make the QQ plot so that we can determine if all groups are no approximately normally distributed. All right, so that's number one. And then number two, we've got another requirement that we've had before, uh, but this one is important still, that we must have the variances are equivalent. Okay, so in order for us to do this, the variances must be equivalent. Now, a lot of times we have no idea what the population variances are, so we need some way to actually go in and look at the sample data to assess if we can make this statement that the variances are equivalent. 
All right, so here's what we can do. We can go look at the sample standard deviations. So for the sample standard deviations, if we want this to be able to claim that the variances are equivalent, this is what we can go check. We can take the biggest sample standard deviation. So this is sample standard deviation big. So maybe we've got four groups. The biggest sample standard deviation, we want that one to be less than or equal to two times the standard deviation of the smallest sample standard deviation. If we can say that this is true, then we were good enough and we can say that the variances, well, we can assume that, that the variances are equal. So we need these two requirements. Okay, so all groups must be normally distributed or approximately so, and the variances need to be equivalent before we can go ahead and do our ANOVA testing.